Hi guys, so let's continue our discussion as a part of our VHDL lecture series. Today we will look at the concept of processes and sequential statements. In the previous lecture we saw concurrent statements, we looked at signals and we saw the when else statements and we saw the with select that was in the previous lecture. As a part of this lecture we will look at the sequential brothers or sisters of these statements. So let's begin. As part of today's lecture I will first discuss what is the concept of a process then I will discuss the if else statement which you will see is similar to the when else statement then we will see the case select statement which is similar to the with select statement that we saw in the previous lecture and lab. So as a part of the sequential statements first I will talk about how a process works then we will go deep into the if and the case statements then I will briefly look at the types of processes that is a combinational process and a sequential process and then we'll see a few modeling examples just basic we will also see this as part of future lectures as well since this is a hardware designs course so we will look at some hardware mo modeling examples as well so here are a few basic characteristics of what a process is if you write a statement in a process they are executed one after the other. The statements can appear only in a process or a sub-program. So let's look at the first two rules. If I write a process, let's say process begin, then whatever statements I write inside a process, and then I write end process, all these statements will execute sequentially one after the other. The process as a whole will execute concurrently. For example if this is process A and then I have a process B then process A and process B will execute concurrently that is in parallel but the statements inside the process will execute sequentially one after the other. That said, we will look at variables as part of a future lecture but let me just make it very clear that only sequential statements so what you write inside a process can use variables. So in short you can use only variables inside a process. The other way around variables can only be used inside a process. Okay? A process is a primary VHDL statement it is concurrent remember I said that all processes behave concurrently its primary job is to describe sequential behavior and I mean by sequential behavior when you have sequential logic like flip-flops registers latches so the primary objective is to specify sequential behavior these two points I just explained that statements in a process are executed sequentially and all processes in an architecture behave concurrently again if there is process A, process B, process C each of them have their own statements but each of them process A, B and C will execute concurrently And very important point that I would like you to note that sequential statements do not always generate sequential hardware. So I can use 
I can use sequential statements to make combinational hardware. But again, the primary objective is to make sequential logic. So I hope these basic points were clear. A few more characteristics of a process. Now this is how you would write a process. You are familiar with these statements, architecture, sequential of multiple is. This is where you would define your signals. We've looked at the signal def definition last lecture. You would start with the keyword process. The signals that you write inside these two brackets, this is called as a sensitivity list. What it means is, what are the changes of the signals that my process is sensitive to. That is exactly what the question you need to ask yourself. That when my A would change or B would change or C would change or D would change then my Z would change. So effectively, my process is sensitive to changes in A, B, C, and D. If you have one signal, then your process will place only one driver on that signal. For example, here I have two statements. Z is A and B. Z is assigned C and D. So effectively, Z can have two drivers but as the rule says you can place only one driver so how do you decide which driver to place so you would take the last value assigned to it that would be this one okay another very important point is until the process gets over or the process is suspended so you go from top to down and when this is suspended that is when the value will get updated this point actually is very important from a simulation perspective You can try this design in simulation and you will see that when you write this there are two possibilities if you synthesize this design or you apply the synthesis tool in your software it might give you an error called as multi-source multi-source as in there are two sources on the signal Z however if you just decide to simulate this design then if you see that Z is updated with the last value of C and T but it only gets assigned after this process is suspended So, as I said that you can either have a sensitivity list, but another way of doing it is with a weight statement. So, you, I will explain this in the next slide, that you can either have a sensitivity list or a weight statement. It's either this or this cannot be both. You can have only signal names 
which you can read please understand that that in your sensitivity list you can place only signal names which you can read so for example say in your entity you have a port of type output so let's say a is of the type out standard logic I'm sure you are familiar with this by now I cannot put a as part of my sensitivity list because I cannot I cannot read an output so I cannot have a here so you can have only static signal names for which reading is permitted and that you can put in your sensitivity list so this is what your sensitivity list will look like and then you'll have the begin statement and the execution of a process consists of repetitive execution so what I mean by rep repetitive execution is you have a process with its sensitivity list then you would have begin and then you have its these statements so once the process is executed if the sensitivity list triggers the process then again the process will execute so it's a very repetitive process so again let's understand these rules again just to summarize the process will put only one driver on the signal basically if you have one signal at the end of the day there will be only one driver the value of the signal is updated with the last value as you see here it's the last value and the value will not be updated until you make one full run at the process until the whole process is executed once and then you can either have a sensitivity list or a wait statement only signal names that you can read can be put on the sensitivity list for example something without cannot be put and your process basically works on repetitive execution of all the sequential statements inside it so the first point I've already mentioned that your simulator runs a process when any one of the signals in the sensitivity list changes so if your a changes then your program is called or sorry your process is called so if a changes then your process will be triggered and you'll go through all these statements now the two styles that I said you can either have a sensitivity list like this that is process a B or you write a wait on A and B at the end you can have either this or this you cannot have both I hope that is clear and again only static names are allowed in the sensitivity list so once the process is over the process suspends at the bottom and the process will wait for this either A or B to change then it will get called okay so let's look at the different sequential statements that we can use as part of our process the if statement is very clear you have used the if statement in C in C++ the concept is same but the result or the hardware can be different please understand that and you will understand that as part of the HDL course but let's go through it first if condition 1 then I will evaluate sequential condition 1 if condition 2 then sequential statement 2 if condition 3 sequential statement 3 
if I have not, no condition and I have a default condition, then I will just say else and put in the last sequential. Please understand that this is else if. Else if is one word. It is as good as saying else and if. But this is not C. In VHDL, this is how we write it. That is else if. Sequential statements like if statement will evaluate this condition first. If this is true, it will execute these statements and these statements are left out. On the other hand, if this statement is false, then it will evaluate this condition. If this is true, then it forgets this. So you can understand that it will evaluate each condition in order. And if statements can be nested, now what do we mean by nested? For example, if I write if a is equal to b, then I can write another if, if x is equal to y, then m is assigned n which is the sequential statement now what I would do is I would write else m is equal to x okay and if so in effect this if statement this if statement belongs under this if statement and when I write the first end if that is this one I am actually ending this if statement please understand that now to continue the top level if statement I would write else m is equal to y and if again please don't spend a lot of time trying to understand this this is just some uh, basic assignments but understand this I can write the first if statement inside which I can write another if statement but the first end if will end this if statement the second end if will end the main if statement so basically you can nest the if statements basically if statements can contain other if statements I hope this is clear let's take an example this is your sensitivity list if X is all zeros then Z gets a else if X is 0 1 0 1 then Z gets B else Z gets C so as long as X is all zeros this will execute and this will be not looked at so if you see that I am using some sort of a priority structure like the when else in combinational that always this guy has more priority than this guy and has more priority over this statement it's a good design practice to avoid using more than three levels of if else I will tell you why in the next slide but try avoiding using more than three levels and while defining the condition you try and use brackets so that you know that if there is an if statement if you nested another if statement it avoids confusion okay 
So let's look at a pri what will be the hardware for the priority logic. Again, your sensitivity list will have A, B, C, D. If your select 2 is equal to 1, so let's say your select 2 is equal to 1, then your Y will be A. So as long as this guy is 1, your Y will always be A. At that time, I don't care about this, I don't care about this. Similarly, if this is 0, that is the other else if condition, so this else if condition will only be evaluated if this is not true. So if this is not true, that means select 2 is 0. If select 2 is 0 and select 1 is 1, then your y will be b. And similarly, now you can figure out for select 0. If this is 0 and this is 0 and this is 1, then this will be your path and not this. Now you see that again this is a priority logic that select 2 has higher priority than select 1 has higher priority than select 0. Now when I said that try use less than three if else statements is because as you see that this keeps growing longer and longer correct now the longer your path the longer the can you guess what delay delay or the time taken for the signal to get from here to here because this is a 2 to 1 multiplexer and it has digital gates it has AND and OR gates now as we know that gates have delay and hence you have to take care of the time so basically avoid more than three levels to reduce delay okay again it is very similar to the when else statement in the concurrent part as you must have already realized so let's look at the second part that is the case statement the case statement or also known as case select is very similar to the with select statement in your concurrent part the basic syntax is as follows case expression is so first the expression is evaluated and if it is choice 1 then you will execute these statements if it is choice 2 you will execute these statements and then you need a default others clause like the with select and then you will have a few statements and then you would write end case so basically your case statement is a series of parallel checks so you will check parallelly you check for a condition and if this choice is accepted then the statements inside are executed sequentially so although you do a parallel check but the execution of the statements is sequential inside okay so the statements are evaluated only if the choice value that is this choice matches the expression value it's quite straightforward so let's look at an example so the best example is a multiplexer so again it's a 4 is to 1 multiplexer with two select lines so case select is again the sensitivity list will contain all those signals again the sensitivity list will contain all those signals 
whose changes will trigger my process. So again, case select is, when select is zero, y gets a. That is when select is zero, zero, y gets a. When select is one, that is zero, one, y gets b. When select is two, that is one, zero, y gets c. Now, I can write when 3, I can write this when 3, but obviously we know that if it's not 0, 1, and 2, then select would be 1, 1, that is 3, that is when others, y gets d. I would say end case and then end process. Now, if you see this very carefully, your with select statement is very similar to the case statement and it does not result in a priority logic like the if statement it does not so you can see the similarity now a few rules about the case statement you can write a range you can write that you can write a list however you can write this when 0 to 4 z is b when 5 z is c when 7 through 9 z is a this is or basically it's whether 7 or 9 z is a so you can write all of that however like the with select you have to cover every possible value similar to the with select And you can have only one when clause for one condition in the sense that if I write when 0 to 4, if I write another when statement which says when 4 again, so I write this and then I write when 4, this is wrong because this 4 overlaps with this 4. So again, what I'm trying to say is that you must cover all choices which is clear and one choice can be covered only once so you can have no overlap okay So let's look at a few invalid case statements. So signal value is of the type integer with the range 0 to 15 and your signal out one is of the type bit. Okay. Now I cannot have a case statement without any when clause. I cannot leave this blank. This is wrong. In this situation, you see that the number 5 and 5 through 10 overlap because 0 to 10 has 5 to 10 as well and 5 to 15 has 5 to 10 as well. So this is wrong because you cannot have overlap. When I write when 0, when 1, you can say yeah they do not there is no overlap that is fine however the values 2 to 15 are not covered because I've specified that the range will go from 0 to 15 so the question is how do I correct this one I should mention a when others clause that when others that covers all the remaining situations okay so please understand that. So you can insert a null statement that when some conditions are met, you don't want any action to be performed. So if you have when others and you don't know what you would like to do, just put null, 
which is it will perform no action okay so let's quickly look at if and case statements the fundamental difference is that if statement produces priority encoded logic that this guy has higher priority over this guy and over this guy and if and the case statement has parallel logic that this will be looked at in parallel so if you want to make a multiplexer you would use a case statement now there are two types of processes we will look at the clocked process in more detail in a future lecture but I would like to explain both now combinatorial process will give you a combinational hardware or combinational logic clocked hardware or clocked process will give you sequential logic for example if I write this which is a B and C and I write this statement X is assigned A and B or C this is the hardware that I would get so remember in the previous slides I said that a sequential process need not always give sequential logic this is the example that this process gives you combinational logic okay now a clocked process is very important because as we know that in today's world most digital circuits work on clock am I right so this is very important how do I write this if I have a clocked process in my sensitivity list I will need just clock that's it because my clock will keep changing and I would like this process to be evaluated on the change of my clock now this is how I would write this clock statement I would write if clock this is called a tick so I would say I would speak it as if clock tick event and please do not use this and you have to use the keyword and if clock tick event and clock equal to one this is how I would speak this statement if clock tick event and clock equal to 1 Q is assigned D and I would say end if now what does this give me basically this statement or condition describes the rising edge of a signal please understand this it describes the rising edge of a signal called CLK CLK or even if I write the word clock is not a keyword it is not a keyword I can also write for example I can change this and write it as if John tick event and I'm sorry John is equal to 1 so it would look for the rising edge of John okay the smiley is just for entertainment purpose now the question that must be in your mind is how do I specify a falling edge A rising edge is this how do I specify a falling edge all I have to do is I will write if clock 
tick event and clock equal to zero that's all so this would be a falling edge I hope that this part is clear please understand this any statement or any signal assignment like this this is a signal assignment under a clock tick event always generates a flip-flop so when I write this effectively I will write Q in between I put a flip-flop which will give input is D output is Q suppose I wrote the statement if clock tick event then X gets Y Y gets Z and if can you think of the hardware what it would be the hardware would be two flip-flops one after the other I'll explain to you X gets Y Y gets Z so I will have X here Y here and Z here so Z will be given to Y through one flip-flop Y will be given to X through another flip-flop please understand this let's take another example suppose if I change this to let's say M so these are two independent statements then effectively I would get two flip-flops such that Y gets X or Y gives to X and Z gives to M we will look at this in more detail in a future lecture but I just thought that I should explain the difference between a clock process and a combinatorial process please understand that in a clocked process I cannot have an else statement it is bad hardware description it is very bad hardware description because then it confuses your hardware that what am I supposed to do when so if there is an edge and until the next edge comes there is should I give output as C and only when the edge comes I should give it as an AND gate so it is confused so a rule please understand a basic rule and this I am explaining to you with years of hardware experience is that if you write if clock tech event you write some statements do the end if do not write anything below this however you can write something above this that is if for example reset is equal to 1 you can write some logic then you write else if so this is correct but you cannot write anything below the clock tick event so to make this a little more clear your clock if your clock tick event if statement should be the last in that process please understand that in that particular process the clock tick event should be the last one one more point is inside this clock tick event if inside the if of a clock tick event you can write other if statements that is possible but this if will be the last one inside this you can write if statements so you can nest if statements 
but you cannot write another else if you cannot write another else if with respect to this clock if you cannot do that this is wrong and bad HDL okay so we understood the concept of process we understood the if statement we understood the case statement we looked at the combinatorial process we looked at the clocked process now in a future lecture we will look at how to design using clock so I hope that this lecture was clear I'll see you in the next lecture thank you